Hello you wonderful bastards, I'm Flame and I'll be your guide on this Friday on the happenings of WoW and Blizzard. Mike Morhaime is gone, well not gone, but stepping down as the president of the company making room for new blood. You think you want it, but you don't. As right armor gets improvements, a new ring, yay or nay? Patch 8.1 data mines with the new raids, new pilot animations, new professions, updates, new spoilers. More, more clash tuning for underperforming specs. Looking at you, elementals and demos. Mythic Plus 10 dungeons will start to reward more loot with each increasing level. And BlizzCon schedule released with WoW not being in the first day. Congratulations on graduating from another work week and reaching the final destination Friday night when we go out drinking with friends to forget all about Azerite armor or switch to our masochistic forms and read all the things that are and will be affecting us when jumping into our weekend gaming sessions. To guide you on the latter part of the journey, I, Flame, will board the boat on cooldown together with you and we will sail on the river that is game design. I will warn you though, it's going to be a bumpy ride. But not to worry, I will ease it in. BlizzCon schedule has been released and now we can see that WoW is no longer on the first day when it comes to the What's Next panel. It will have its own panel of course, but that will be on the next day, November the 3rd. Taking its place is Diablo. Now, I don't know how much of a maverick you are in trying other games than WoW, but we are Blizzard fanboys, and Marcellian specifically likes dark, edgy, gory things, and you probably cannot tell from this face. As such, we are excited for what Diablo will announce, and of course you might have heard the rumors of a Netflix series, a new game, the Druid patch, etc, etc. We are also super curious as to what Blizzard will announce for WoW at BlizzCon, seeing as how 8.1 has already been placed under the spotlight and seems like it's serving its role of putting out fires left and right. But don't you worry your sorry little butts, because we will be covering pretty much everything of interest that's going on there. And, and if you actually have something in mind that you are curious about, hit us in the comments. Mythic Plus Dungeons will receive increased loot after the plus 10 keys, which currently have been capped. With each additional level, we get a 40% chance of an extra piece, essentially making it so a plus 15 will end up giving two additional items. This of course stacks with the additional piece you get from completing it in time, so a total of 5 pieces will be in the chest for the plus 15. Additionally, a new keystone mechanic will be included, where as in your key will be replaced if you delete it. To get the replacement, you just need to do another mythic dungeon and it will drop at the end. The level of the key will be either one level lower than the keystone you got from your weekly chest, or if you finish the dungeon as an M plus mythic, it will be one level lower than the dungeon you just cleared, whichever the two is highest. Interesting stuff for people who just want to reset their keys. On another note, we are getting new class tuning and this comes with some buffs that on paper seem pretty thick. Unholy decays and feral druids get an overall 4% damage increase across the board, with fire mages getting a 5% increase. Classes that have known to be underperforming like shadow priests getting a 10% buff on mind flay and 15% buff on mind seer. And it makes us think, wow, Shadow Priest must have been really underperforming to get a buff like this. And it doesn't end here, of course. The Mean class is getting buffs for all specs. Yes, Shamans, you guessed it. I was trying to be a little bit sneaky there, but ho <laughs> ho couldn't get that past you, could I? Resto Shamans are getting a 4% across the board with an additional 6% buff for Healing Surge with its mana being reduced as well. It almost feels like Resto was underperforming. At the same time, Enhancement is getting a 5% buff, which is okay, I suppose. Haven't seen that many Enhancement Shamans, but the ones that I did see seem to be doing pretty okay. But hey, more love to Shamish, right? Now, on to the next bit. We will be talking about Azerite Arm. Ha <laughs> ha 
Just kidding. Of course, elemental shamans are getting buffs. Of course they are. Of course. It's not like they've been underperforming this entire expansion so far. Lightning Bolt, Chain Lightning and Earthquake are seeing a 15% increase buff. Wow, it's almost as if they were underperf- But the big buffs seem to be rolling out and Demonology Warlocks have their Shadow Bolts, Demon Bolts and Call Dreadstalkers buffed by 15% as well. Wow! It's almost at- And lastly, Protection Warrior, the tank to be, or not to be if you're playing Battle for Azeroth will also be getting a buff to the Vanguard Aura where they get a 5% increase in armor from strength and 5% extra stamina. Which is good because, let's be real, how many protection warriors have you seen? What? They're all preparing for classic WoW? Ah, alright. More and more information about 8.1 is being released and as a policy I will avoid story and spoilers but go into some of the gameplay changes. Starting off with what's most exciting are a few of the new Azerite traits and golly gee Batman, they do seem to be what we thought they would have been at the beginning of BFA. Amazing stuff like Hell Chains for DKs where using Dark Transformation will put a fire chain between you and your pet that deals damage to enemies or kill commands that has a chance to summon a dire beast. Yay zoo galore! And let's not forget and you will probably will have to get used to this. Shamans are getting stuff. Yay! Elemental shamans are getting stuff. Yay! Tectonic Thunder makes Earthquake deal more damage. Aww. But has a 25% chance of making Lightning Bolt and Chain Lightning be instant cast. And there are a lot more traits like this and we can only expect this trend to continue for the rest of the expansion. I might be coming from a place of low expectations due to the past couple of weeks, but I honestly think this is a step in the right direction. And I hope we can forget all about the boring stat buff increase in patch 8.0. Also in 8.1, Paladins will have new spell animations, yay pretty light! Marcellian will be so happy now that he has a flashlight above his head to heal him in arenas, which is cheating if you ask me. I mean, we might as well let them use lay on hands at this point. With all of this talk about Azerite armor, we now have a better understanding on how the system will evolve in Tides of Vengeance, because all of this shit will be live next patch of course. One addition will be sooner though, and that is for Emissary Quest to drop Azerite gear for up to 307 eye level, which will solve one of the main issues with the system, its availability, which has been a point of debate for the longest time. The eye level seems a bit high for Emissary Quest and I'm not too keen on invalidating heroic level drops from Uldir with easy to do content. So hopefully there will be a system in place that might change the eye level depending on the type of content your character is clearing and I think it might actually be that way but we are left with little in the way of confirmation at this point. Also one of the main changes will be an extra ring to traits with two specs specific traits to choose from addressing another issue with the system the choice issue. As it stands, the realistic choice you have for each individual piece of Azerite gear is if you choose your spec specific trait that gives a generic bonus or passive, or you can choose the generic trait that applies to all specs and provides a generic boost in stats of a random damage proc. Of course, this sounds good on paper, but then again, the whole system sounds good on paper and right now we might as well take that paper and wipe our butts. So here's hoping the execution of the change will be better this time. And the last major issue they addressed and will address further is the trait death. Yes, the interestingness of the trait itself, which from the data mine content and also mentioned earlier in the video seems to be going in the right direction. With all that being said, we will take a step back from game design to talk about the company, Blizzard. Blizzard was co-founded by three people, Alan Adam, Frank Pierce and Michael Morhaime. Alan Adam was the initial chairman and executive producer and worked a bit on WoW before its release. He left the company in 2004 and came back in 2016 and has been a part of Blizzard ever since. Frank Pierce worked on pretty much everything Warcraft and was executive producer for TBC, Wrath, Kata and Miss of Pandaria. And lastly we have Michael Morhaime, the big dog, that announced he will be stepping down as CEO and remaining as an advisor, appointing J. Allen Brack as the new CEO. 
You know Mr. Brack, the guy that said about Classic WoW you think you want it but you actually don't. Well, despite the meme, the guy has an impressive work resume under his belt, as well as the majority of Blizzard's executive team, which will include Ray Gresco, the guy brought in to lead the Diablo 3 team and was until recently the executive producer of Overwatch, helping its boom in esports and in gaming in general, Overwatch that is. This is indeed an interesting turn of events. Of course, Blizzard is not just World of Warcraft, but also a company housing big names like Starcraft, Diablo, Hearthstone, Overwatch, Heroes of the Storm, games that most of us played at one point or another. But it's fair to say that Blizzard is the big name today because of World of Warcraft's success, and seeing as the reception of the game as of now is lackluster to say the least, a change was needed indeed. I don't know if the change had to be at the CEO level, and we all fondly remember our boy Chris Metzen, who also left Blizzard due to personal reasons, after Warlords of Draenor, after which we had Legion, which was a booming success. Now, don't get me wrong, I can't see anyone replacing Metzen ever, and he brought a feel to the game, a feel that I personally resonate with. But big changes like this, the same with Mike, Michael Morheim, brought some good into the game, and I seriously hope this is another one of these changes. WoW needs a change. It's a very old game that stands the test of time, and it's probably still the most played MMO today for good reasons. Times change, as mentioned by Poet GH, and we want to see the game adapting. Speculations run both ways as far as the future of the game goes, but speculations are sometimes wrong, and for a game I love from the bottom of my heart, I hope we might yet still see the best that it can offer. Thank you so much guys for checking our video today and I really want to know what you guys think if you can hit us in the comment section below. I really enjoy the game and I want to keep playing and I want the game to grow into bigger things. And if you like the type of content that we do, please support us by subscribing and enabling those notifications. That way you can get the videos in your feed a lot quicker. And if you do want to go the extra mile, we do have a Patreon page that we run and we already have wonderful patrons that are supporting us every month and to you guys thank you and see you next week